years now, Russia has made verifiable claims that the U.S. is running secret biological weapons labs around their borders. And while Western media now claims this to be misinformation, back in 2013, they reported on it. While the United States and Murder Incorporated have been waging illegal wars all across the world in the name of democracy, Russia has been quietly selling energy and minding their own business. And according to National Geographic, this was the reason why the Pentagon was building these bioweapons labs in the first place, because Russia was entirely quiet on the subject and the U.S. wanted to get ahead of them. The initial bio lab in Kazakhstan was built by the U.S. for $100 million to store high-risk diseases such as plague and anthrax and was hoping to attract scientists who might otherwise create biological weapons of mass destruction for someone else in order to keep the world safe. The U.S. has since built several labs in Kazakhstan. Most recently, a biosafety level four lab to be completed in early 2022. As early as 2004, the Pentagon's Defense Threat Reduction Agency DTRA began creating a network of biolabs for infectious diseases in Uzbekistan. And within a few years after operations began, outbreaks of unknown diseases were reported in the same areas as the labs. In Georgia, leaked documents show that the U.S. Embassy has been transporting deadly pathogens and human blood as diplomatic cargo in a scheme where private U.S. contractors working for three different U.S. biolabs have been given diplomatic immunity to do so. Shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine, At War Clandestine released a video with maps of U.S. biolabs matching up with maps of the recent attack, suggesting that Russia was securing these top-secret biolabs. Western media claims this is false, but fails to debunk it. And once the video goes viral, the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine is caught deleting evidence of these labs from their website. But not before an independent journalist was able to copy documents showing 11 Ukrainian biolabs funded by the Pentagon. The Russian Embassy to Bosnia has accused the U.S. of filling Ukraine with biolabs, which were very possibly used to study methods for destroying the Russian people at the genetic level. And we now know that these so-called mRNA vaccines are destroying people at the genetic level. We now officially know that COVID-19 is a man-made bioweapon. We know that it was funded by elements of the NIH and Peter Daszak's EcoHealth Alliance. We know that it was made in Wuhan, China. And so what isn't threatening about the U.S. encircling Russia with top secret biolabs? And who on earth thinks it's a coincidence that everyone involved in the United Nations Great Reset are now the Ukraine's greatest allies of all time? The mercenaries and war profiteers in America are getting excited about making short-term profits off the dead. But the only ones who will benefit from this war are the crooks at the top who have been caught committing the most heinous crime against humanity in all of recorded history. And the only righteous way out of this is to hold these crooks accountable. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese. After the Russians secured Pentagon-run biolabs in Ukraine, the U.S. Embassy was caught deleting proof of this from their website. And when the Russians shared documents showing the Ukrainian Minister of Health ordering employees of these biolabs to destroy all deadly pathogens, U.S. Senator Marco Rubio asked the U.S. State Department if there was any truth to this. Undersecretary Victoria Newland not only confirmed the presence of the labs, but confirmed that they contain weaponized biological agents that they now fear the Russians will indiscriminately use to start a world war. The Pentagon calls them bio-research labs and containment labs and claim their clandestine operation is all somehow in self-defense. But they are admittedly creating and storing weaponized biological material. And so these biolabs are in violation of Article 1 of the Prohibition on Biological Weapons. 
During the past couple years, citizens of the world have been getting an advanced education on bioweapons. And the very same crooks we see foisting the Great Reset medical tyranny are involved in the Ukrainian bioweapons labs. This is all being paid for with tax dollars through the Pentagon's Defense Threat Reduction Agency, the DTRA. U.S. company Black & Veatch has been working closely with the DTRA building bioweapons labs since 2003. Black & Veatch share an office in Kiev with Metabiota, who signed an $18.4 million contract with Black & Veatch in 2014. Metabiota got their start in 2015 with funding from Hunter Biden's Rosemont Seneca Technology Partners, who gave Metabiota $30 million to help protect the world from the spread of epidemics. This is the very same Rosemont Seneca that was mysteriously wired $3.5 million from the wife of the former mayor of Moscow. And the very same Metabiota partnered with Peter Daszak's Eco Health Alliance, the group that Dr. Fauci used to funnel money to the Wuhan lab for gain of function research in 2014. In 2014, Metabiota, Eco Health Alliance, and the Wuhan Institute of Virology were together researching infectious diseases deriving from Chinese bats. Metabiota is working with known CIA front InQtel. It is funded by the U.S. Department of Defense, the NIH, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Google, and the National Geographic Society. Metabiota's founder, Nathan Wolf, sits on the board of Eco Health Alliance and is a member of DARPA's Defense Science Research Council. In 2012, he wrote a book titled The Viral Storm, The Dawn of a New Pandemic Age, wherein he thanked his friends, pedophile Jeffrey Epstein and biotech venture capitalist Boris Nikolic. Boris Nikolic was named Jeffrey Epstein's successor executor upon his death. Wolf has also been seen hanging out with Ghislaine Maxwell on multiple occasions. He is also one of Klaus Schwab's young global leaders, trained on how to enact the Great Reset Agenda being directed by the World Economic Forum. Russia claims the Pentagon has over 30 biolabs in the Ukraine alone. China claims they are operating 336 biolabs in 30 different countries. And now, members of our corrupt U.S. government are saying this is all a Russian conspiracy and that we should soon expect a false flag attack from Russia. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100 percent it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese. I want to be straight with you. There will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. I repeat, there will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. So people assume uh, we are just going back uh, to the good old world which we had um, and everything will be normal again in how we are used to normal in the old fashion. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. A vaccine on its own will not end the pandemic. Surveillance will need to continue. People will still need to be tested, isolated and cared for. Contacts will still need to be traced and quarantined. And that's just the way it is. We've got to accept that this is the new world. Thank you.